This time we're going to talk about a rhombus. They're over here. A rhombus has four congruent sides. A rhombus is a special parallelogram. It's also, to many people, a special kite. Some people don't think it is a special kite, but it is. So, but what's special about it? It has four congruent sides. So it's a parallelogram, where two pairs of opposite sides parallel, opposite sides congruent, diagonal bisect, all that. And the sides are congruent. And the diagonals are going to end up bisecting the opposite angles. So it's a bunch of bisectors in there. Now the reason I put diagonals are perpendicular, because that's actually a property of a kite. I put it here because some people don't believe it's really a kite. If you believe it's a kite, we already tell you up here, diagonals are perpendicular. And all the properties follow down. So let's construct a rhombus based on four congruent sides. And we're going to use circles to make four congruent sides. So, we'll start with a circle. I kind of I need to know how big this circle is. So, let's make it three. There's circle three. So now, if I were to draw that, that would be size three. If I were to draw another one, it would be size three. Okay, so there is one half of our rhombus. I need to draw another half that is also three and three. It'll look much easier. So if I actually, well, let's just do it. So circle three. So here's another half of the rhombus, three and three. Now the thing is, I got to make those threes line up. I got to you know arrange these two circles somehow. So that the threes line up such that you know all the angles are the same kind of thing. So easiest way to do that is kind of what you see right there, but do this from the beginning. Start with two circles across. We always want things to cross. Intersections are what matters. So circle of center and radius. Three. Okie dokie. And then we'll draw one down here. Three. Find where they cross. That's that intersection tool. Boom, there are the corners of our rhombus. Connect the dots. Oh, let's do it in polygon form. All right, polygon A to C and C to D. No, don't do that. I double clicked something, and then that's what happens. It thinks I want to know the properties of, uh, get on B, will you? Okay, come on down. Boom, boom, there's our rhombus. The sides are all three. If you want me to prove that they're parallel, I will prove they are parallel by measuring slopes. Find the slope of that, 1.21. Its twin will be 1.21. Find the slope of this one, negative 1.44. The slope, negative 1.44. So, parallel, two sets of parallel. Let's get rid of some of this stuff. I can. It doesn't want to cooperate sometimes. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, the angles are supposed to be the same, right? The opposite angles are supposed to be the same. So let us measure opposite angles. 7443 and 7443. Now, do these two have to be the same, 7443? Well, what's 74 plus 74? Well, that's like 148. Well, that ain't going to work, is it? Oh, they don't have, these don't have to be, oh, there's what's going on. Oh, you did it backward. You always got to go clockwise. So, two pair of angles that are congruent. I can move it. Always congruent. We made the sides the same by doing two circles that are the same size. So you got to know what size. It doesn't matter what size, but they got to be the same and they have to overlap. So, what's the other thing? Oh, these diagonals are perpendicular. Well, we know that. Because if you make two circles and you connect the intersections, it connects the center points, it makes it perpendicular. So, we already knew that. So, there's your rhombus. Draw two circles, same size. Overlap them. Connect the intersections. 